They told me that um that, that they'll release me from here if I plead guilty. Okay. If I don't plead the guilty plea, there's still a chance that they'll send me across the street. And if they send me across the street, then I'll be facing the charges over there. I try to go straight, but driving is just my thing. That's what, I just like driving. That's what get me in trouble all the time. My whole life has always been taking somebody's car. Since Aaron first showed up at Lake County Juvenile Complex six years ago, he's been no stranger to the folks at intake. Yeah, this will be your last picture as a um, juvenile. Just days away from his 18th birthday, Aaron finds himself in juvenile okay. court one last time. This time, he was picked up on a bench warrant from a neighboring town in Illinois, where he was facing charges of battery. So I missed a court date, I think, right. when I came down here. So I, I just forgot about it, because it was just a little battery. I was, I was fighting so much, and I didn't, I didn't even realize that I missed a court date. To make matters worse, Aaron's still facing charges of auto theft and battery here in Lake County. Intake supervisor Deborah Clayton tries to impress upon him just how tricky his situation is. Um, your, that was your eighth complaint. You have been detained with us five times, and you've been here for a total of 161 days. Yeah. You didn't know that? You were at placement? Yes. For how long? Nine months. Then you were at Silver State? For how long? Fifteen months. So what do you want the court to do with you? Well, I'm, I, want, I want to go home, but it's probably not in the um, possibility right now, but I hope I can go home. If anything, give me a commitment here. Don't send me across the street, because if they send me across the street, I'm going to have a felony, adult felony, and then my life is going to be basically ruined if I get an adult felony. Over there, they don't give a crap <laughs> about rehabilitation. They're not going to want you to go to placements or get counseling, and they're not going to ask you what has happened in your life. They don't care. So at what point are you going to, like, let it soak through, maybe do something different? Here in the juvenile court system, there are more options available to kids than there are in the adult system. It needs to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Help you, God. I mean, the juvenile court was created to provide services to kids and families to make them better adults. For 26 years, senior judge Mary Beth Bonaventura has been making decisions that are aimed at helping kids at risk get back on track. They're coming back to our community. And so I want to do everything I can do first before I send them to the DOC or Department of Corrections. Because Aaron is on the cusp of his 18th birthday and has charges of auto theft and battery pending, the stakes are much higher this time. Aaron has already been warned that the prosecutor's office is considering waiving him to the adult system. I got a bad record, so I just bag him. I probably bag him to please don't take my life away from me. I, to me, that's taking my life away because it'll be three fel three adult felonies instead of just one. Because I have three pending. Aaron has already admitted a problem with auto theft and high speed chases, but his other vice, being an escape artist. My staff called me to let me know that he was trying to be a trickster and had a detention officer bring him up 
Sunday night for the release for the weekenders. And our intake officer, Elizabeth, noticed that, no, he's not a weekender. He's not supposed to be leaving. And he tried to convince her, yes, I am. I'm a weekender. I don't belong here. I'm supposed to go home. I came in on Friday. I need to go home. My mom is going to be picking me up. I mean, he tried to really convince her. If for some reason staff let you walk out that door, they would be coming for me, and my job would be on the line. You've got to understand the decisions that you make have consequences that don't affect you but affect everybody else around you. you tell Stop lie, being it slick. The staff okay. made a mistake and put it in my paperwork. They, regardless, you knew you weren't a yeah, weekender. You knew you weren't supposed to be, you know, understand. seeing freedom. <laughs> I understand. Aaron's attempt to fly the coop at LCJC wasn't his first escape attempt. Recently, he tied his bed sheets together to escape the hospital room where he was being treated for stab wounds. Getting stabbed. Getting stabbed by who? It was many, it was a while ago. A long time ago? Yeah. I was liking this girl and she was liking me, but she had a boyfriend and he cut me like six times. Like right right here on my forehead and on my chin and on my, my arm. The police was like, yeah, we're taking you to jail. And I was like, what? I'm like, I'm the victim. I'm like, man, I'm not going to jail. So I tied a couple sheets together and climbed out the window. But now the clock is ticking. And what's on Aaron's mind? going across the street to adult jail. They're trying to send me across the street and deal with my cases as and charge me as an adult because they said I've been taking too many cars and I'm a menace to society and I belong behind bars. I think I have a decision-making problem. That's what I think I do because like when decision comes, I know right from wrong and I'll be like, oh yeah, that's wrong. But I just do what I like to do instead of what's right. I do what I want to do. There's no one reason kids find themselves in trouble with the law or detained at LCJC. Some might be there for a simple lapse in judgment, others for more serious crimes. For 16-year-old Ariana, she's back at LCJC after just being released barely a month ago. Are you allergic to anything? Do you have any health problems? No. Suicide? In the past or the present? You've been suicidal in the past? And you've never received counseling for it? Then nobody knows. Your mom never knew? What was your reason? <clears throat> what made you change? What made you not think of suicide anymore? Your brother? That's a good reason. How old is he? 11. 11 years old? I do have the two younger brothers and the one older brother. I've really been taking care of my two younger brothers since I was 13, because my mom's always been at work. So I, I basically raised them too. Is he upset right now because you're arrested? Yeah. Was he with you guys? Yeah. Oh, so he had to see the whole thing? Ariana had no bad intentions for wanting to catch a high school football game, but having been expelled from the school a year before for fighting, the principal didn't see things the same way, and he summoned the police to escort her off of school premises. I was going to a football game. It was supposed to be me and my mom and my two brothers. My mom had to leave to take her boyfriend home, and she was going to come right back. So when we go to buy our tickets, and the principal comes up and she says, because I don't go to that school, I couldn't go. So I had to leave and she had the police come to my face and rush me down. She states that she was facing a dilemma. She'd been asked to leave, but her brothers were already in the game. So what was she to do? Leave them totally unsupervised, or defy the officers and go in after them. As luck would have it, her mother showed up at the last minute, so she didn't have to make that choice. But Ariana was still in trouble. He seems, like, very angry. Are you mad right now? Why? Do you think you have anger problems? No. Do you need the court to help you? You don't need... The court's out. No. 
Uh, do you understand you're on probation? So this kind of looks bad on you. Ariana's case is complicated by two previous charges for battery on a classmate and driving without a license. Her last court case ended with a warning. The um, probation officer told me if I got in any more trouble, I was going to have to go to girls' school. So, yeah, I'm real nervous. Preoccupied with thoughts of being sent to juvenile prison, Ariana prepares for another weekend of detention and her court hearing on Monday, which could mean a long time away from home. I'm trying not to think about it. It's making me real nervous. I just don't know what's going to happen. Usually I got an idea. This time I don't. That at-risk kids are often faced with growing up faster than most of us is anything but a cliché. Kids are often faced with playing the role of an absent parent, taking care of their siblings, and even contributing to a family's monthly financial needs. For Ariana, this makes being detained all the more stressful. I can't take it in here. Three days being locked up, not doing anything, that's not good. After a while, you start to get a little uh, crazy. <laughs> Some of them seem to be so happy. It's like, how are you happy and you're in here? How do they do that? Nearly 30% of all the juveniles arrested each year are females. Detention officers have told us that females differ from boys in that they're much more social in their interactions. Most of my friends are locked up right now, so. There are a few girls that are good friends to me, like I can relate to them a lot and they're just really kind to me. Just like me, I guess. A lot, a lot of stories, a lot of hardship. 17-year-old Marie has a history of truancy and running away, but most of her problems started when she was much younger. Well, my mom died when I was a year old and I never knew my dad. One of my mom's sisters adopted me when I was about nine years old, but she had breast cancer and they got a divorce. I went to my grandpa's house. That didn't work out. So I got sent to my aunt's house and they, uh, my, I just don't get along with them. I had a major depression, so I didn't want to go to school. I used to be 245 pounds too. It was huge, it was bad. If ever there was a time for someone, a system to intervene in their life, it's now. And that's what the juvenile court does best, and that's what our role is, to provide for all the services to help somebody grow into a responsible, productive person. Winding up in juvenile court actually helped Marie get some of the services she desperately needed. They sent me this place called Christian Haven. It's a placement. It helped my attitude. It helped me to lose weight and everything, so it helped my self-esteem and all that, so I got happier. Marie will be released in less than a week, but with no family and nowhere to go, she'll be transferred to an independent living facility. They teach you how to be independent, like you get your own place, you work your way up, you get your job, you go to school, you earn money, you get allowance, and you just learn how to be like a, an adult. The main thing that I'm after is getting my education, and I don't really have like what I need to get there. You know, like I don't have a family to support me. I don't have any money. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get there. I don't, all I know is I can get my high school diploma. So like four more days. Although she doesn't know what she'll do with the rest of her life, one thing is on her mind. Perfect situation for me, finally meeting my dad. He always left letters for me for when I grew up, when I was a baby. So I've read those and he sounds like a nice guy. He sounds like he cares about me. I'll probably try and find him when I'm 18. For Marie, turning 18 means freedom, but for Aaron, it could mean the end of his. Since we first met him, he's turned 18 in LCJC, which makes the reality of being transferred to the adult system loom ever larger. The only bright spot? A visit from his mother. Happy belated birthday. Did you enjoy your birthday in no, jail? I did not enjoy my birthday. <laughs> If the court decides to waive Aaron, send him to adult court, he'll find himself going to the adult jail to await his trial across the street. 
if you do go across the street, I want you to build knowledge. You ain't going across the street for nonsense. You're going across the street to improve yourself and become more than being across the street. You hear me? I ain't gonna go up there though. It should be the end of my life. I hope not, because you're very immature. You've been very immature a long time in life. You're like a kid that don't want to grow up. You just don't hear me out anymore. I do be hearing you. You just, you just want to just do what you do, huh? And I believe that this is happening for to mature you, because you know, on the streets, what it's going to be for you. Death, right? It was really bad out on the streets for you, and yet you were still out there. You've been stabbed, right? You've been beat. You know, it's just, it's been bad, rough, you know? If you want me to be continue to be a part of your life, son, yeah, you have to get it together because I'm not about this here. No more. You're, you're an adult young man now. So think about all of that, you hear me? You know? I take that in thought. Wrong with that, man. Don't take that thought, say, I'm gonna do this. That's the attitude it takes in order for it to happen. I'm gonna do this. Hear me out, son. My relationship with my mom is good. Me and my mom are like best friends. She's disappointed in me for being back here after I told her I wasn't gonna come back. I'm missing my mom so much, so I guess you don't know what you got until it's gone. Saturday night means chapel service for any of the youth offenders who choose to attend. How are you guys going to do that? You going to do it on your own? Did you try to do it on your own before? Did it work? It would be difficult for most teens to imagine the stress that comes with being detained, away from friends and away from family. It's especially hard on Ariana, which we see when she has a visit from her mom. No, you can't go to girls' school. Because it's like, you're the center of the household. You can't go to girls' school. What's everybody going to do? Going to girls' school means being sent to juvenile prison, a difficult thing to consider on its own. And yet Ariana still has the welfare of her family to consider. And on top of that, I have to pay your fees while I'm here tomorrow. So that's $110 plus the money I lost. Saturday, which was overtime. Because Ariana's mother works evenings and nights at the local factory, the responsibility of raising her brothers often falls on Ariana. You got to get it together because see, I like, feel like I'm having panic attacks. You're not home. I can't talk to you. I didn't go to work Friday. I couldn't get it together. Stay home. Mess with your brothers. Or try to get them to stop crying. It's ridiculous. Sometimes you just got to just hold up, be quiet, don't say nothing. Control your temper, your emotions. Stupid. I wasn't even given a chance to walk away. As soon as they seen me, they had the police all in my face. That was crazy. And then they did it in front of everybody. No, I make giddy up. I got to try to get to the stores before they're closed when you grow trees and you didn't make a full list for me. So I guess I'll see you in the morning and then uh, we'll be going home afterwards. I hope so. It's just I don't want to deny the charges and then have to sit in here and wait for another court day like everybody else. You got to sit in here, sit in here and wait, and then you go on trial, and then it's, like I said, the police officer against you who's been here twice. I mean, who are you going to believe? So you just say that you're guilty just to go home? It's crazy. No, you can't go to girls' school. Because you'll be home tomorrow, washing dishes, cleaning up. Hopefully. They know hopefully you're going home. OK, I better go. See you in the morning. I just hope I get to go home. If anything worse comes, um, house arrest. I guess. Girls' school is, from what I've heard, like it's just the worst thing. Over in the boys' pod, Aaron considers what awaits him 
tomorrow in court. Well, tomorrow is like a, it's like a wave we're hearing. They're trying to wave me across the street. Like the tension is killing me. I just wish I knew what was going on. Like now, like right now, I probably ain't gonna get too, too much sleep tonight because I'm thinking about the thinking about the um, consequences that's for my actions. But I feel kind of anxious to know what's going on, and I feel I feel kind of sad and beat. I try to beat up myself because it's, it's all everything I put upon myself. It's all my fault. Like my mom told me today, I just need to grow up and be a man. I'm just a big kid. The closer kids get to their court date, the more mindful they become about their offenses and the seriousness of their situation. This was apparent with Aaron as well, evident from this clip from the first day we met him. I can't stop getting behind the wheel. I was walking down the street and I seen somebody had left the keys in the ignition and I took that car too. You got a need yeah. for speed. It's not just a video yeah. game. People really need it. You need for speed. Yeah, I've been to two high speed chases. Three, four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This just took me longer than what it was supposed to, to, for me to learn. I still, I think I learned this time because I know the, the seriousness of my situation. I think I learned. I, I feel I'm going to pray tonight and hope, hopefully God gives me this chance to get out. Maybe on one of those little house arrest bands, then I can work my way from there because I know I can. With only 12 hours before court, Aaron's neighbor Kenneth offers his form of support. I want to tell the judge the whole story and just let her know that I, I am going to school. I have changed a lot since the last time I have been to court. Tell me what happened. Me, my brother, and a friend, we was going in line to get our tickets for the football game. And the principal had uh, stopped me, and she said, well, um, I don't go to the school no more, so either I had to leave or I had to go to the other side. And when she came up, she came up with the police officer. I said, um, okay, well, I gotta get my brothers first. He said, no, I asked you to leave. The man put the um, handcuffs on me, and then he took me to the police car, and that's when my mom pulled up. And he had told her I was uh, cussing at him and all this. Were you? No, I wasn't. No more questions, Judge. Ariana, are you on probation? Yes, I am. What are you on probation for? For um, battery and driving without a license. Well, what did that battery involve? Uh, me and my friends and um, fighting a female. OK, you and your friends, how many friends? Uh, I think it was five of us. There was five of you fighting with another person, right? Yes. With one lone person? Yes. And you beat up this victim, right? Uh-huh. And then you go to the football game, and you end up getting arrested, and you say you didn't do anything, though, right? Right. And you weren't saying anything? No, I wasn't saying anything to him. You weren't screaming profanities at him? No, I wasn't. Well, how was it you became arrested then? I don't know. I have no further questions, Judge. All right. Thank you. You may have a seat back there. The purpose of today's hearing is to determine what should happen to Ariana. Do you have an opinion as to what the court should do? I want my daughter home with me. How is she doing in school? She's doing real good this year. I took her to a different school. I didn't want her with the same people. Do you believe that the environment at her former school was part of the reason why she was having um, her anger problems? Yes. So you recognized the problem and did something about it? Yes. Okay. Are you able to provide supervision um, over her? Yes. Um, when do you work? I work swing shifts rotating backwards. And explain that in a little bit more detail. Um, I finish midnight today, and I start afternoons um, Wednesday. So when I finish, I may or may not have a day off, and then I go to day turns, and then back to midnights, rotating backwards. OK, OK. That's all that I have, Judge. Thank you. You may have a seat. As a final point of perspective, Judge Mary Beth Bonaventura 
will call the probation department to testify and give their recommendation of what should happen with Ariana. I'm 18 now, I'm ready to move on with my life and change, you know what I'm saying, make a different page. I'm tired of this, this juvenile jail stuff, I'm tired of jail, period. Good morning, Mr. Jacob. Good morning, how are you, Mr. Connell? Uh, I believe his attorney is going to speak with him. Aaron learns that his attorney has established a plea deal with the prosecutor's office. If he accepts it, he'll stay in the juvenile system, but he'll have to admit to his charge. And if he declines, he's most likely headed across the street. Um, I want to talk to my mom, so I need some, some personal counseling. But not, I already know my mom's going to be like, no, if you didn't do it, don't plead guilty. Yeah, you've definitely got some soul searching to do to make a decision. Well, hey, Ma. They, they told me that um that if I plead guilty, they'll release me from here, no probation, no nothing. If I don't plead the guilty plea, that if I st it's still a chance that they'll send me across the street, and if they send me across the street, then I'll be facing the charges over there. Yeah, cause I was thinking like maybe I'll just get it, get it over with here, and then go down there and see see what they're gonna do down there. At this point, Aaron is stuck between the easiest way to resolve his issue by admitting to the charge and resolving the case in the juvenile system, or following his mother's advice based on the principle that he should not admit to something he did not do. Okay. Do you have any idea what you're going to do? I, I wanted to go ahead and plead guilty and get it over with. But my mom never steered me wrong. Unable to defy the only person who's ever been loyal to him, Aaron makes the questionable decision of declining the plea deal and facing the charge. If he really had nothing to do with the auto theft in this case, then he should have nothing to worry about. Uh, what should I forward on to your attorney? Not guilty. He's the only person that can make that decision. You know, he can't let anybody else influence him, so time will tell. Now Judge Bonaventura will turn to Ariana's probation officer to get her perspective about the case. Because the probation officer has the most frequent day-to-day -day contact with a youth offender, their input is critical. Speak with uh, Campania Charter School this morning to get an update on how um, this young lady was doing. Um, I spoke to two of her teachers, a science teacher and an English teacher. They report that she's very well behaved, she's getting excellent grades, so we do want her to continue her um, education. We feel that that's very important. We also have a concern about some possible depression. Um, so we would like to have a mental health screening and to follow through with any recommendations. We would like to see her uh, released to her mother's care on in-house arrest so that she can continue attending school. I have uh, spoken to mother this morning and explained to her um, what our concerns were and what the recommendation would be. Um, Mrs. Guzik, do you have anything about release or detention? Judge, until I'd heard the mother speak, I was of a mind that Ariana could go home. I, I'm concerned. She's at the football game. Her mother leaves for a brief time, and this is when this problem arises. Uh, and then her mother testifies that she works a swing shift, and Ariana's basically not being supervised in the home. You know, she's on probation for the, the battery that was described. She was arguing with the police officer whether she says she was or not. Uh, there's some type of impulse control problem here that Ariana has that leaves me very concerned. I think there is an element to her that does endanger herself and does endanger others, and that needs to be addressed by this court. Judge, the mistake she made was to wait and find her 10 and 11 year old brother, and apparently their feet weren't moving fast enough for the police officer at that point. That's why she's in here. Judge, I would agree with the probation department's recommendation that 
the assistance for the depression um, be ordered, but I disagree with the probation department's recommendation that she be on house arrest for a fight at school and for not leaving a football game fast enough. I think that that is um, um, overkill. Thank you. The decision the court has to make today is twofold. One is, if there is there probable cause that this child has committed a delinquent act, and I think that that's uncontroverted. And for that, police officer in the report says, you know, that she was very vulgar to him, and you know, used a lot of profanity. You know, for her to say that she said nothing is hard to believe. You know, minimally, I'm, my my voice is going to be elevated, saying I've got to get my sibling at least. And so I, I think that somewhere in the middle, you know, if you live long enough, you kind of know that somewhere in the middle is the truth. The second decision I have to make is whether or not she should remain detained here or be released to the custody of her mother. Nothing I heard here today makes me believe that she's a danger to other people or to herself. And so the court is going to order that she be released to the custody of her mother. But I am going to place her on in-house arrest for this reason. I think that until this case is over and until her probation is over, I mean, she needs to have some restrictions. There are consequences to your actions. Uh, but I'll order that um, she have a mental health screening within 30 days and that uh, you follow those recommendations to address uh, whether or not she has depression and if so, what um, help is out there for her. All right, then this hearing's adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Rihanna. You're going home. She's Rihanna. not somebody I think that's a real threat to the community, but more that has some anger issues that, you know, hopefully we can help her. I mean, that's what we're designed to do. We have children and they are just doing things for the first time in their life. They're going through experiences that we as adults have experienced maybe too many times, but the adult system isn't equipped, nor does the law allow them to provide for all of these services from counseling to drug testing to vocational training to all sorts of services that would help rehabilitate somebody. To have somebody actually fight for me to get out of that, it feels pretty good. Released. I think everybody has depression issues at some point in their lives. I mean, I know I'm not crazy, but I do think I need to be in therapy, yeah. I think I do, but um, I guess that could be a good thing. Aaron's attorney must now consult with Aaron about his decision to turn down the plea deal. If he pleads not guilty, his entire case will come down to whether or not the police can present probable cause that he committed the crime. The, the prosecutor's office is giving this one-time opportunity to, to try to get this case resolved. Are you not clear as to believing that they have enough on you? Is that what the problem is? Yeah, I know they don't. I didn't even do it. Well, what the police officer is saying is that you basically fled from this vehicle and they chased you down and that they were on a foot pursuit pursuing you that led to your arrest. I don't even know nothing about. I came. Were you driving? Were you driving a White Expedition at any time mm -mm. around that time period? No. No. You never. You never uh, took off running. Not You're sure. saying none of that happened. Okay. Happen. All right. Well, then I'll let the uh, state know then that you're going to uh, not accept a proposal of that point. Aaron's complete denial of wrongdoing seems implausible to his attorney and makes it a difficult case to argue. Right. I'm willing to plead guilty to this, but I want to assure that I can get back here. Well, you just told me that you weren't involved in any of this. I know. That's what I told him. I told him I didn't do it. Yeah. But I can't have you. I can't have you go ahead and make an admission. With Aaron denying the charges against him, he leaves his attorney Nick Perko no choice but to return to the prosecution a decline of the plea deal. That leaves Aaron with little choice but to sit back and hope they can't make the case against him. Well, it's an uphill climb, right? Just so you know. Yeah. I understand. Okay. Thank you. I'll be in touch. With so much at stake and with so much legal process swirling around, no one's sure whether or not Aaron fully understands the implications of his choice. Once you have an adult charge, you have no opportunity whatsoever of that charge going away, like you do with the juvenile charge, because you can file for the court to expunge it. You're looking at two, two felonies right now. I have 17 years of Oh, you're 18 now, aren't you? So that's not a good start. If you accepted the, this resolution, what would end up happening is you'd get your life straightened out, go to school, get a job, you would show the court that I'm on the right track now, my life's in order, and then the court would consider that in its determination. We're gonna have, just, we're gonna, we're gonna tough it out.
I really feel uh, good when I can help get a youngster on the right path, but uh, unfortunately, sometimes they're their, their biggest obstacle. To complicate matters further, Aaron still has a pending charge in the neighboring state of Illinois. No matter what happens with his case here in Lake County, he still has to face the music across the state line. That, coupled with his conflicted feelings about his mother's advice, has him utterly confused. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised, actually. Most of the kids think they're growing at 13 and can make their own decisions without any parent parental input. So for him at 18 to be so concerned of mom's input, is it's kind of unusual. I know what I wanted to do, but my mom would never steer me wrong. Like I said, she always been on my side. Although in general the juvenile system does work faster than the adult system, with some cases, complicated cases like Aaron's, days can turn into weeks, can turn into months. Aaron's now been in LCJC 60 days, and he's still not sure about what to do about the plea deal and whether or not he should take his mother's advice. I'm ready to go home, I'm just ready to get it over with. I'm aggressive saying I'm innocent, I just, I just want to get it over with. Today is the last chance Aaron will have to stay out of the adult system by admitting his guilt. All right, Aaron, you ready? Oh, oh let's do it. Kneel down, please. You know, this is your waiver, right? So they told me if I plead guilty to something, they're going to drop something. I don't know. Have you agreed to do that? Yeah. Thank so you, you you're, plea, you're plea bargaining it? Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Your mom's in agreement in that? No. Oh, she's not? But how's she going to feel if you accept it then? I don't know. How do you feel about that? I don't know. I'm 18. I got to make some decisions by myself. Yeah, well, I understand that. Like, I'm willing to make the changes for the better for myself. I'm not, I'm not a bad kid like that. I just went down the wrong path and I'm ready to go to, go the right way now. I just ready to get, I'm gonna get it over with though. Just okay. go here, stay here and go there with them. Okay. Yeah. All righty, I hope it all works out for you. It's better to get it over with. No more probation, no more restrictions. I can move on with my life, get a good job, and put this behind me, you know? The closer Aaron got to court day, the more the option of admitting guilt and going through the juvenile system started to appeal to him. But that route faces one last challenge. Your mom's out there saying that you know, she doesn't want you to say that you can't have to anything. So, because she claims you didn't do anything wrong, so it's up to you. With only moments to decide, Aaron is still torn between what's in his heart and what his mother continues to insist he should do. I thought you said you wanted to move on with your life. Yeah. You can't keep doing this, dude. You gotta make a decision. So. In a moment, the judge will just probably will probably just say, "Let's set up for a waiver, and I'm not gonna accept any plea agreement." So, yeah. So you gotta decide now. Mr. Perkle, yes. We got two minutes for the young man to make a decision. Okay. All right, come on. Okay, so are you, are you doing the plea agreement then? Come on. Okay. If they've accepted the plea, he's a lucky man. If they haven't, he's in for a long process yet to come. Whatever Aaron decides, his decision will dictate the way his life goes for years to come. And it's my understanding the uh, parties have yeah. yeah. Reached an agreement to resolve this matter short of the waiver hearing. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Ashburn, is this the agreement as you understand it? Mr. Ashburn, is this the agreement as you understand it? Yeah. I'm sorry? Yeah. I can't hear you, Mr. Ashburn. Can you speak up, please? Yes. At this point, Aaron's mother thinks he's accepted the deal, and she leaves the courtroom. The record will note that his mother's left the room. Mr. Ashburn, you have some reluctance to enter into this agreement? 
Is there a reason why you're refusing to respond? How would you feel if your mom walked out on you? Sorry, sir? How would you feel if your mother walked out on you? Mr. Ashford? Aaron's inability to speak is interpreted as contempt, and the judge makes up Aaron's mind for him. We'll reconvene on December 18th at 9 o'clock. Be prepared to go forward with the waiver. I won't accept any agreements. The judge takes the plea deal off the table. Aaron's next hearing will be a waiver hearing, where the prosecution will make the case to hand him over to the adult system. But right now, that's not the foremost thing on Aaron's mind. She walked out on me. She walked out on me. Why, but was it because you took the plea? Is that what you think, dude? It was. She don't understand when you're in a trap. You gotta take risks and you gotta admit when you're wrong, man. And I was wrong. I did I did things that I shouldn't have did. And they're giving me opportunity and she don't understand. I just didn't know what to do, man. I was lost. And it made it even worse because I didn't have my mom's support like I like I always I always had my mom's support. And it just made it even worse. Yeah. And I just like, I don't know what to do, man. It's like telling me, telling me to choose something I couldn't choose. That was just the worst thing she could ever did. She never did nothing like that before. I feel like if I ain't got my mom, I ain't got nobody.